Shalom everybody. It is 2020 and we are getting ready to celebrate Passover in our homes. This has been a remarkable year because we all find ourselves in a situation not unlike the first Israelites getting ready to celebrate the Passover in Egypt where we're quarantined in our homes. And I want us to take advantage of this opportunity. Look, there are things in this that God is turning for good and using for good. We need to know this, that His goodness is not absent, but His goodness is in the midst of us in this time. And so you have a special opportunity to celebrate together with your family and those that you're able to be with in your homes. As I was preparing for this, the burden and the thought on my heart for this Passover is what Yeshua, what Jesus said uh, when he instituted what we call the Last Supper or the communion, which was a Passover meal. He said, this do in remembrance of me. This is a memorial to the Lamb of God. This is an opportunity for us to open our hearts even as we open the door. Yeshua said in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone would hear and would open the door, I will come in and I will sup with him. And so I'm asking you right now, open that door and invite him that he is at the table with you, that this is a memorial of the Lamb with the Lamb, that he will sup with us. And we're going to do this in remembrance of him. We've made this video to help for you to be able to celebrate this in your home. And so we're going to be walking you through the Haggadah. The Haggadah is the booklet that gives us the order of the Seder. The Seder is the name of the Passover meal and it actually means order. And so there's specific elements and an order to them that we're going to be engaging with together. And we're going to do everything we can to help make that easy for you with this video. But as we begin this now, and as we invite the Lord together, I want to blow the shofar as a reminder to God that we are celebrating before Him, that we are celebrating Him. A reminder to God of His promises that if we put the blood of the Lamb on the doorposts of our home, He will pass over. Jesus All right, let's begin. Turn to the first page of the Haggadah, The Purpose of the Seder, and read it together. Before we even really begin the Seder, we have the Bidikat Chametz, or the search for leaven. And so, parents, you need to, if you have children that are going to look for the chametz, and it's a lot of fun to do this, you need to take a little bit of leaven, it could be some breadcrumbs or crackers, and put it in a napkin and hide it away somewhere where the kids can go find it. Now it's time for the bidikat chametz. The children are invited to go and find the leaven that you hid in the house. When it's brought together, we burn it. This is called the Bi'ur Chametz. It's also located on the same page, including the blessing for it. But this is a time for you as a family to let the Holy Spirit reveal any Chametz, any leaven, any sin that He wants to deal with in our lives. Paul talks about leaven as sin. And so we are being purified and sanctified as we begin the Passover Seder. Now it's time for the Seder plate, where we will acknowledge the different elements that are on the plate and that will be used throughout the Seder. Call out each item and acknowledge the meanings behind them that are mentioned in the passages. Two of the special items that are going to be mentioned at this time is the Zroah, representing the Lamb, which is the central part of Passover. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And this is our purpose in this evening as a memorial to the Lamb is to behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Another element that is reviewed at this time is the special napkin that holds the matzah. 
Now if you don't have a fancy one like this, you can take a cloth, but the goal is to fold it in a way that you have three compartments. One for a upper matzah representing God, one a middle matzah representing the priesthood or Yeshua, and then lastly a third matzah underneath representing the people. The other thing that is featured at this time in the Seder are the four cups, reminding us of the promises in Exodus chapter 6 and the cups that remember the blood of the Lamb that was shed for us. Now it's time to light the candles and say Kiddush. Passover begins a Shabbat. And Shabbat is begun by lighting candles to remember the last fire before we celebrate Sabbath, which we don't light fire in. So the woman of the house at this time will light the candles and recite the blessing. Afterwards, the man of the house will lift up the first of the four cups. This is the cup of sanctification or the Kiddush, and it is a setting apart of this time unto the Lord who makes it holy. This cup is drunk leaning left, as many elements in the Seder are taken leaning left. We do this to show that now we're free men and no longer slaves. The next section is the Karpas. So go ahead and read the section together, dip your parsley in the salt water, and enjoy. Next is the Yachatz. This is the time where we take out the middle matzah from that special napkin and we break it, putting one half back and the other half is wrapped in a white linen cloth and hidden away. The children will search for it after the meal and it's called the afikoman. Now is time for the Megid. The Megid actually includes a few different elements that are coming in the Passover Seder, but it is the time of the telling of the story of the Exodus. And so I invite someone from the table to tell, in whatever way you'd like, the story of the Exodus. We'll also include some links on the Passover page on the website for you to be able to look at some videos or something that you might want to use or incorporate. But at this time, we pour the second cup, which will be used in a moment, but we don't drink it. The next part of the Megid is the Manishtana. This is the time where the children really get involved in asking questions. Why is this night different than all other nights? If you're not familiar with the music, there's also a link to people singing the Manishtana here on the website. Now is the time in the Megid where we use the second of the four cups of Passover to talk about and remember the ten plagues on the Egyptians. You can use your finger or a spoon if you'd like to remove a drop of the grape juice each time as you recite one of the plagues together. The next part of the Seder is the last part of the Megid, which is the Dayenu. The Dayenu is a beautiful traditional song. It goes like this in the chorus part, just so you're familiar. Die, die, Yenu, die, die, Yenu, die, die, Yenu, die, Yenu, die, Yenu, die, Yenu, die, die, Yenu. It's a lot of fun. I want to encourage you, you can sing this, but if it's hard, because the Hebrew verses can be hard, um, you can say it or read something or just remember testimonies of the times when God has brought deliverance in your lives. And you can sing just the chorus even. I mean, it's pretty easy. It's the one word, dayenu. It means it would have been enough. And it is a, a statement of we don't deserve any of the goodness of God. Everything is His grace. Dayenu. All right, now is time for the motzi matzah. And next to the lamb and the cups of wine or grape juice, this is such a beautiful symbol of the body of the Messiah. 
and his sacrifice for us. And so in this time you can take the matzah and hold it up to a candle or something so people can see the stripes and the piercings in the matzah and then take it together gratefully and as you do don't forget to say the blessings that are written on the page. Now is time for the maror, the bitter herbs. Bitter herbs are one of the three elements that we're commanded to eat during Passover. The bitter herbs, the lamb, and the, the unleavened bread. The bitter herbs remind us of the bitterness of our slavery in Egypt and for us the bitterness of our slavery to sin. The tradition is that we take enough of the bitter herbs that it actually makes us cry. Now is time for the Choroset and the Korach. The Choroset first is taken and it's a mixture of apples and nuts and, and grape juice and it's sweet and it's got cinnamon and it's wonderful, but it reminds us of the brick, the mortar that we used in Egypt to build the cities for Pharaoh. Next, we take that and we add to it the bitter herbs, the maror, and we make this sandwich called the korech, which reminds us that even in the midst of slavery, God, His presence and His promises bring something sweet. When we take of the bitter herbs, the maror and the korech, we eat it without leaning left. All right, guys, now it's time for the shulchan orech where we really eat together, many special dishes, matzo ball soup and tzimis and kugel and gefilte fish and it's a really special fun time and I, I hope you enjoy it immensely. This uh, shulchan orech begins though with the eating of the beitzah or the egg and it is a symbol of the sacrifice in the temple and also a memorial to the burning or the destruction of the temple and so traditionally the egg is taken and put through the fire in order to remember the temple was destroyed. So go ahead and bless the meal. Beteavon, or bon appetit. Now it's time for the rachsa. This is a special washing after the meal. We use this as an opportunity to remember Yeshua washing the disciples' feet on the Passover Eve. And so if you have people there with you, I would recommend you go ahead and wash each other's feet however you feel led and remember the commandment that we serve each other. Now we get to the very dessert of the meal, the afikomen and the third cup. The afikomen has been hidden away if you remember earlier on and so now is the time to ask the kids to go find the afikomen. The tradition is to give them some kind of a prize to whoever would find it. It's really fun. But when it's found, the afikomen is used as, like I mentioned, the dessert of the meal and so you break it and give it to each one. This is the bread that Yeshua lifted and said, this is my body which is broken for you. And so use this opportunity to really engage with the Lamb of God that was slain. And this is the time when Yeshua lifted the third cup, the cup of redemption after the meal. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. And so use this now as communion with you and the people that are there with you as we honor the Lamb. So now it's time for the fourth cup. This is the cup most likely that Yeshua, Jesus said he wouldn't drink with the disciples until he drank it again in his Father's kingdom. And it's called the cup of the kingdom. So go ahead and pour the fourth cup and enjoy it as a looking forward to the kingdom that is coming. Now is also the time in the meal where we open the door for Elijah. Elijah is the one who runs before the Messiah. And in Passover, we have a glimpse of the coming of Mashiach. And so we open the door and see, is this the year that Elijah is coming? Is this the year Messiah will come? 
Now it's time to praise God. This is the Hallel. This is the worship time. It says that Yeshua, Jesus, sang a hymn with his disciples. And so we sing praises to God from the Psalms is the tradition. But pick whatever songs and make this a joyous time together. Wow, guys, that's it. We did the Passover together. We're going to finish with the last blessing, the Nirtso. I hope you were blessed in this time of remembering the Lamb together. Let us read this blessing on the last page. Now our Seder is complete. We have kept the feast, celebrating the ancient story of deliverance as our own. May we be together again next year to celebrate the feast. May Zion be blessed with peace. May his ancient people come to know him as Lord and Messiah. And may all mankind someday live in harmony and contentment under his rule. Amen. Next year, let's do this in Jerusalem.